Hello everyone, welcome to this video, to this presentation that I have prepared for you. Um, so I hope that you can enjoy this video and at the same time you can pay the most attention in order for you to understand a little bit more about the topic or the phenomenon that I'm going to be talking to you in the later, uh, in the later presentation. So I am going to share my screen with you so you can get to know about the topic that I have prepared for you for the Morphin Syntax class. Um, and at the same time, we are going to be discussing and we're going to be talking about a little bit more about the topic that I have here for you. So as you can see on the screen, the topic that I am going to be discussing, it is morphological haplology. So this is the phenomenon that I found out, that I was searching and I found out. So uh, I am going to explain to you what is a haplology and why this is a phenomenon in English. We are going to be focusing, focusing on the English language. So as you can see, this is the topic and this is the phenomenon. And in the later, uh, in the coming slide, I am going to be talking to you a little bit more about this phenomenon. And at, at the end, at the end of the presentation, sorry, I am going to be giving you some solutions that we can implement as students, or we can say as students of this language, so we can uh, manage a little bit better of this language. So we are going to start, and here I have the introduction. So it, the introduction says. A fairly common phenomenon of inflection is morphological haplology, in which an affix or cleated is absent when the accent part of the seam is a morphonous a tweet. So as you can see, this is a very common phenomenon uh, in inflection. So the morphological haplology is a very common phenomenon of inflection. As the introduction says, it is when an affix or a cleated is absent when the adjacent part of the stem is a muffinous tweet. So later on, I am going to be explaining you what is more a haplology. And of course, I am going to be talking to you about an affix of cleated so you can have a better understanding of all these concepts and keywords that we have to keep in mind in order to understand the presentation. So we are going to continue. And it says, what is haplology? As I said before, the, this is a very common phenomenon, morphological haplology. As you know, morpho uh, morphology, it is the study of words, how they are formed, and the relationship to other words in the same language. But at the same time, morphology analyzes the structure of words and the part of that words um, for example, I can say the stems, the road words, the prefixes, and also the suffixes. But now we are going to discuss what haplology is. So as you can see here, haplology, it is a type of dissimulation, a sound change involving the loss of a syllable when it's next to a phonetically identical or similar syllable. So this is what haplology is. It is, it, it is a process in which we cut or we, uh, we disseminate the sound when we, when we have involved in, uh, two identical syllables and when they are next to each other. So this process as a presentation of what you can see here, what you can see here, it is a type of dissimulation. It is like, cutting that sound, they repeat the same as the previous one. Because in English, we cannot let that this happens. We cannot uh, say uh, the, the sound in two, in two times because we are going to confuse or maybe we are going to disturb the, mesh, the message that we are trying to convey to others. So this is basically what haplology is. And now we are going to continue with another question. So as I said before, we are going to be discussing about key words or key, con or key concepts that we have to keep in mind in order to understand what morphological haplology is. Uh, so in this case, we have what is cleated. So cleated, it is an unstressed word that normally occurs only in combination with another word. So as you can see here, here I have some examples for you. And we have the word what. So as you can see, we have the, the word what, but in this case, we are adding the sound of the letter S. As you can see, the, in this case, we are combining, okay? We have a combination of two sounds, but when we pronounce this sound, it is like the only one, what. 
we uh, because we are adding in this case the sound to the letter s and we say what we don't we don't cut in this case because we are adding we are having a combination of words another one it is uh, the combination of i i am but in this case we cut the letter a and we add it to the to i mean to the personal pronoun i and we say um, so as you can see, the clear it is a combination of both of both words to in order to combine only one sound. And of course, as I, I am saying, normally occurs in combination. Another example that I have here for you, it is command. So as you can see, we have two different words, but combining those words in order to create only one sound, and we say command. So this is basically what clitic is. And only to refresh a little bit, uh, a little uh, the previous one of the haplology. In haplology, we cut a sound that we don't need it because we are also uh, we are um, we are saying that word. We are we are expressing that sound, but we don't need another sound that is similar to the other one. But in clitic, we have a combination of different of different words in order to create one sound. Okay. And now we are going to continue with morphological haplology. Now we are going to get uh, into deep about the concept of the phenomenon that we have here in the presentation. So morphological haplology, it is a common type of morphological a section that a subset of words take to now marking and in an inflated form. So this is this is what morphological haplo, uh, morphological haplology is. It is a common type of morphological a section that a subset of words take to now marking in an inflated form. So as you can see, this is a, a type of a section, but a type of morphological a section. Uh, of course, when we have a set of words, so uh, later on, I am going to be giving you some examples in order for you to understand a little bit better about this phenomenon occurring in the English language. So now we are going to know about some examples. Morphological haplology, it is very common in the languages of the world. Let me explain you something about this phenomenon. This is very common in different languages of the world, such as English, Spanish, uh, Greek, and in different. But in this case, we are going to be focused on English. However, English provides a wonderful opportunity for haplology to occur, since it has many suffixes, plural, possessive, and third person singular. So as you can see, English provides a wonderful opportunity for haplology to occur, because in English we have different, different plurals, different types of plural. As you can see, we have suffixes, plural, possessive, third person singular, and many more that we can discuss. But in this case, we are going to be focusing on some of, and some of them in order for you to understand uh, how haplology happens in some words, in some plurals that we have in English. But as I said before, this is a common phenomenon in different types of languages around the world, not only in English. So we are going to be focused on the first one. And the first example that I have prepared for you, the number one, it is the possessive. As I said before, English has a lot of possessive. We have thirds, uh, we have possessive on the third and singular and, and irregular plurals. And also we have a possessive when we and when we want to create it. A different combination or even the possessive of a single word or a singular object. So possessive plural show obligatory haplology. The possessive the, of the sum of the letter S attaches to singular nouns and irregular plurals, but the possessive of the regular plurals containing the morpheme of morpheme S of the sum of the letter S shows only one rather than two, the, 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 it is the expected one. When we are learning in English, we expect to have two, two sounds of the letter S, but in this case, it, we cannot let that happen. And that's why we have haplology in this kind of, uh, we in this plurals, okay? So I have an example for you. The number one is the man's and the boy's bike. 
So as you can see in this one, we are having the possessive, the possessive of, in this case of the bike, when we are saying the man's bike and the boy's bike. So in this case, they are singular, okay? They are not plural. And that's why we permitted the sound of the letter S or the possessive of the letter S in order to say the man's bike or the boy's bike. And on the other hand, we have the second example now in plural, the men's and the children's bite. So as you can see here, we have the plural, but in this case, we don't have the, the sounds of the letter S before, uh, before the one that we are attaching with the possessive. So in this case, in the, in the word men, we don't have the sound of the letter S. And that's why we can attach or we can add the possessive and the sound of the letter S. And that's why we say the men's bite or the children's bite. Now pay attention to the third example, the boy's bite, but not the boy's bite. So as you can see, this, is, this cannot happen because we have the plural of the word boys. And we are finishing the, the plural of the word boys with the sound of the letter S. And that's why we cannot permit once again that sound. And that's why we cut that possessive and only we have we have the apostrophe in order to create the possessive. If we say the boys bite. The second example here, it is the plural. Of course, English has a lot of plural, as I said before. So haplology occurs in several places with plural, with the uh, with the sound of the letter S. Nouns ending in a in I E S that occur in the plural show haplology optionally or obligatory. For example, specious. The word specious. We say specious because it's it is also the singular but also the plural, and we don't say specious. So as you can see here, we have the singular, but also the plural. And that's why we cannot permit the, an extra sound, or, or in this case, the sounds of the letter uh, ES. So we cut the two letters or the two sounds in order to let the word in the natural form species. The second one, it is serious, but we don't, we say serious, but done, but we don't say serious. So as you can see, once again, we cannot permit the sounds of the letter ES because we already have the plural of this noun. So when we have a nouns ending with I, with I, E, S, we cannot permit or we cannot double that sound in order to create the plural because we already have the plural of that noun. As a third example, we have nouns ending in PS. A few nouns ending in PS also show haplogical plurals. For example, once again, we have singular and also plural. And we say the number one, vices, but we don't say vices. So as you can see, that word, it is singular, but at the same time, it is plural, and we cannot double that sound because this is not permitted in English. So we cut, we dissimilate that sound, and this is where haplology happens in this sound in order to count, in order, I, I mean, in order to pronounce the word as it is. So we cannot permit this sound because we already have the plural and also the singular of the word. The, th the example uh, letter in the letter B, we have trips, but we don't say trips. So as you can see, we cannot permit the sound because we already have the plural in the word, but, and also we have the singular. And the example, the last one that I have, it is cyclops, but we don't say cyclopses. So as you can see, we cannot permit that sound because it already exists, because we say cyclops, the sounds of the letter S or the sounds of the letter PS, but we don't double that sound. We don't double the sound of the, of the letter ES in order to create another plural because the word, it is singular and at the same time, it is plural. So we are going to continue. And the other one, number four, it is uh, proper names after any S. Haplology also occurs in names if the name is perceived as containing a plural. The major section is with proper names where the haplology occurs after any, after any S. For example, the cast, but not the casses. Once again, we have this name. Of the, it can be um, a last name, but we don't double that sound. We don't create the plural because we already have, or oh, it is stated this way, the cast, but not the casses. 
letter B, the ops house, and letter C, the games house versus the cops house. In this case, in the first one, the games house, we already have the, the noun games and it is plural, so we cannot double and say games, no. This, this is not permitted, this cannot happen. And this is where haplology occurs because we already have the plural and we only add the possessive in this case of the house and we say the games house versus the cops house. And in the letter B, we already have also the possessive and we only attach uh, the apostrophe in order to create the possessive in the ops house. But we don't say the, op, the ops, house no this is not this is this is something that cannot happen in english now guys i am going to give you some solutions or a solutions in order to be to manage sorry a little bit better this kind of phenomenon in english so as you know in this case we all we all are um English learners. So it, it, we have to practice, we have to continue on practice this language, this beautiful language, in order to manage a little bit better all these kind of phenomena and concepts in order for us to transmit better messages to other people. So we have to practice, we have to study a lot in order to understand uh, this kind of phenomenon because sometimes in some languages it is permitted, but in others we don't, we don't have to say it or it is not permitted. And that's why we have to pay attention and we have to be careful at the moment of pronouncing this kind of, uh, the, of this kind of sentences of this kind of words. So in this way, we cannot commit these mistakes of these errors at the moment of speaking of saying, or in this case, using the possessive or the plurals in English. But because as you know, English provides a lot of possessive in third person, single in third person, um, with the ing and progressive, the, uh, the s in the plural or the s in the possessive uh, or the ed in order to create the past tense. So as you can see, we have different kind of morphemes and for prefix six and suffix so that's why we have to manage and we have to know and we have to study in order to manage and speak uh, this kind of words or use the language in a proper way. So we are almost finishing with the presentation and the conclusion that I have here. It is a morphological haplology. It is a common phenomenon in languages of the word. As I was explaining to you before, this, this is something that happened not only in English, but in different kind of languages around the world, especially in Spanish, that it is our native language. But in this case, we are focusing on English, affecting both inflectional affixes and cleative. So it does not seem to be as common as fill affixation. As you know, in English, we have different kind of inflectional affixes as I, well, as I was saying to you before, the third person, the possessive, the plural, the progressive, the past tense, and so much more. And also we have the affixation uh, such as um, prefixes, suffixes. Uh, so when we create an affixation, it is when we add a morphine or when we add uh, to, we add, when we add a morphine in order to create a new word or in order to have another word used in prefixes or suffixes. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope that you can, on, you can now understand a little bit better about the morphological haplology and how this phenomenon occurs in the English language. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And also if you have questions, if you have doubts about this topic, you can let me know on the comment section or I will be very happy in order to, to, help, uh, to help you with, the, with your doubts and your problems. So thank you so much once again for your attention and I hope that you have enjoyed and you have understood a little bit better about this phenomenon that personally I consider that it is very important because in English we have a lot of we the haplology happens in a lot of words and that's why we have to pay attention to this different kind of phenomenon so once again thank you so much and see you next time bye bye